At the last MIT track day, our sales rep Nick's version 6 STI project car suffered a terminal engine failure. We decided to take it down to Subaru specialist MRT to see what caused the problem and to rebuild it tough. Okay, this is Nick's new engine, it's a 00 STI. Basically did the uh, big end bearings and a bit of damage to the pistons. And the recommendation from our point of view these days, it's a lot more cost effective to rebuild these engines with the 2.5 litre short block. Now what a lot of people forget is when it comes to 2.5 litre blocks, it's important to make sure you choose the right block because these days there's about four or five 2.5 litre engines that you can buy as, buy as a short block that depending on your choice of path where you're going in the future has a big effect on the compression ratio, cam timing and obviously overall engine longevity. And being a rebuild engine we're using Nick's original heads, spark plug leads, inlet manifold and all the other things that come with the original engine. One particular thing to remember, if you're doing a rebuild on your Subaru engine and you've done um, say a big end bearing or you've done some internal damage to the engine, don't fall into the trap of reusing one of these oil coolers because they've got lots of fine galleries for getting rid of heat, but what they also do is act as a perfect filter for storing damaged bits of engine parts. So when you start up your brand new engine, all these little bits will come out and do more damage inside the engine. It's always a good bit of advice to put a brand new oil cooler or heat exchanger, whatever you want to call it. The first phase was to remove the engine from the car so it could be stripped down, then into the engine room to assemble the new US 2.5 litre STI block. Okay, this is the um, 2.5 block, US block. I've actually stripped it down, taken the internals out, the standard pistons and rods, so we can actually put stronger rods or pistons in. So what's happened, we've stripped it down, checked the bearing clearances on the crank and rods. So I'm up to the stage now where I'm going to start assembling. I'm actually cleaning just the excessive shavings and stuff like that with the crank. Make sure everything's clean before assemble. What I'm actually doing now is sticking a bit of lube on the bearings. So when you start the engine, does it mark the bearings? Then um, put a bit of lube on actually the rod bolts so they don't strip. So what I'll do, I'll put all the rods on, then I'll actually go around and I'll talk them all up to the specs. Now I'm actually going to torque them all up to specs. So what I'm going to do now is grab the block. I'm just going to split the block in half. pop in the um, remain seal. What I have to do now is um, put some seal around the block so I can assemble the block together and talk it up. Alrighty, ready to put it together. I'm actually going to put the main bolts back in, seal the block up together. So I'll put them all in and I'll talk them up to the um, specs. Having the crank bolt in, just turn the engine, make sure it's not locking up. Just turn it nicely. Now I've just got to put the actual rings on the piston and then um, pop them in. The actual airy pistons we're using, it's a forged piston so we can turn up the boost. That's the actual rings, I've got to store them to the uh, actual pistons. Very careful with these, it ain't snapping. It's uh, easy to snap. Or just around the rings, so when you push them down the bore, it doesn't scrape and mark the bore. You need to compress the rings so you can get it through the bore. So if you don't, you're just going to smash the rings straight off before it actually goes in. Grab the piston, make sure the gudgeon pin is 
farthest out because what's going to happen now once I put that in, the gudger pin is going to go through this hole, through the piston, through the rod. Then once that's in, I put another gudger pin clip so the gudger pin doesn't actually slide. Actually, put the, um, the slip pin to hold the gudger pin in so it doesn't slide out, and that's it. And that's one piston in, three more to go. Once the pistons go in, I actually set it up on the engine stand. I bolt the um, head studs because we're putting ARP head studs on it. I'm using the Kometic head gaskets and bolt the heads up and just start fitting all the um, accessories like oil pumps and rock covers and stuff like that to the stage where it's ready to go into the car. With the engine back together, it's time to get it into the car. The engine mounts and bell housing are done up first. Then the ancillaries are bolted on, starting with the power steering pump, then the aircon and the alternator. It's then simply a matter of bolting everything back up and plugging all the electrical connections in. Over the next few weeks, we'll wear in the fresh engine. Next issue, we'll get the car on the dyno and see what sort of gains the extra 500cc in capacity will make. Stay tuned.